Hi, I'm Craig Bell. And I'm John Perkins. This week, John, we take a look at Good Friday and the sacrifice Jesus made for us. Helmut Thiekel said this, Jesus rose up from the place where the kingdoms of the world shimmered before him, where crowns flashed and banners rustled and hosts of enthusiastic people were ready to acclaim him and quietly walked the way of poverty and suffering towards the cross. We'll talk about that today on Take 5. In Matthew chapter 27, while Jesus was hanging on the cross, they said unto him, Save thyself, if thy be the Son of God. Come down from the cross. Verse 41, it says, Likewise the chief priest mocked him with the scribes and elders, saying, He saved others, himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him come down now, and then we will believe. So, Brother Craig, could Christ had came down from the cross and saved himself? Absolutely. The Bible says that he could have called 12 legions of angels. That's 120,000 angels could have came down and took him off the cross. But in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2, it says, Looking into Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. You know, John, we make the cross look so pretty on the front of our churches and light it up and it's a beautiful thing, but the cross itself was actually a very ugly instrument of death. One medical doctor describes a very physical description of what death on the cross looked like. He writes, the cross is placed on the ground and the exhausted man is quickly thrown backwards with his shoulders against the wood. The soldier feels for the depression on the front of the wrists and drives a heavy square wrought iron nail through the wrist and deep into the wood. Quickly, he moves to the other side, repeats the action, being careful not to pull the arms too tightly, but to allow some flexibility for movement. The cross is then lifted into place. The left foot is pressed backward against the right foot, and with both feet extended, toes down, a nail is driven through the arch of each one, leaving the knees flexed. The victim is now crucified. He is slowly sags down with more weight on the nails in his wrist. Excruciating fiery pain shoots along the fingers, up the arms to explode in the brain. The nails in the wrists are putting pressure on the median nerves. As he pushes himself upward to avoid stretching torment, he places the full weight on the nail through his feet. Again, he feels the searing agony of the nail tearing through the nerves between the bones of the feet. As the arms fatigue, cramps sweep through the muscles, knotting them in deep, relentless, throbbing pain. With these cramps come the inability to push himself upward to breathe. Air can be drawn into the lungs but not exhaled. He fights to raise himself in order to get even one breath. Finally, he will die of suffocation when he can no longer pull himself up for breath anymore. What an agonizing way to die, John, and to think that he chose that death for you and I. I was getting ready to ask you, Brother Craig, why, if Jesus had the power to save himself from this awful, awful death, why did he choose to stay on the cross? I think, John, because his love went deeper than the pain. And also, in you have to think about God. God's allowing this to happen to His only begotten Son. It says in Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 10, talking about this agony pain that He was going to suffer, and it said, And yet it pleased the Lord to bruise Him, and He had put Him to grief. There's a true story, John, of a man named Phil Litterford who took his son on an Alaska fishing trip with two other men. In a quest to find some running salmon, they flew their seaplane to a secluded bay. The fishing was everything they had dreamed of, but they didn't realize when they began to leave that the plane had been too close to the shore and had punctured one of the pontoons on the seaplane. It had caused it to take on some water. The extra weight caused the seaplane to crash within moments of takeoff. Everyone survived, but they had no safety equipment on board. They used their waders as floating devices, but the frigid waters was a deadly threat. The current was too strong for Dr. Litterford's 12-year-old son to swim against. The other two men fought their way against the tide and barely made it to shore. The two survivors looked back from the shore to see Dr. Litterford and his son Mark being swept out to sea arm in arm. The Coast Guard reported that they probably lasted no more than an hour in the freezing waters. The hypothermia would chill the body functions and put them to sleep. Mark was a smaller body mass and would fall asleep first and die in his father's arms. Dr. Litterford could have made it to shore, but that would have meant abandoning his son. Instead, he chose to give his life for his boy. Jesus said in the book of John in chapter 10 and verse 18, he says, No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down myself. And you know, friends... Jesus done that for you and me.